So now let's have a look at how we go about creating something on these lines. So the idea is that we are looking to uh, essentially model from an existing uh, texture. So um, in the long run, you know, an artist wouldn't necessarily do this because obviously he would have to model in every single last component. Uh, in this case, you know, the buttons and the uh, directional part, etc. Uh, but for the purpose of a simple block out, using this type of uh, imagery, you know, cube craft type thing, uh, paper craft, it's it's perfect. It's perfect. There's no harm in doing it whatsoever, and it would make common sense that you adopt this approach. I mean, why bother having a a grey cube when arguably you could have something that that you know it's got the graphics in place, it represents the Game Boy, and it's taken as a uh, not long whatsoever to do. So the first part of call is to make sure that you have a relevant and appropriate uh, graphic. So in this instance, if we were just to go to uh, in here, if I just type in uh, uh, game paper craft, you'll find there's all kinds of ways and we do wonderful things. And lo and behold, one of the first things that pops up is in fact the Game Boy. If you look carefully, there's quite a few little bits and bobs, uh, all kinds of variations of this. So all you would do is do a search, find something which is appropriate and suits your needs. Uh, you know, there's the original Super Mario, uh, the, uh, I can't remember which one, Game Boy this is, yeah, uh, the Advanced SP and so on. So yes, if do search and you should be able to stumble across whatever it is you're interested in. There's even uh, arcade machines out there as well, so if I do game, if I just do Papercraft arcade machines, <clears throat> Lo and behold, shock horror, lots and lots and lots. So, you know, you could take any one of these graphics and just use the exact same principles that I've just done. You could very, very, very easily uh, go about and recreate, you know, Satan's Hollow as the case may be, which sounds a bit wrong, but anyway. So, <clears throat> the other thing to consider is well, you know, is there other options? You know, if I do papercraft uh, pool table, for example, shock horror. <clears throat> so there is other uh, options out there. You could possibly do the exact same thing with this, and it would just eliminate the need for you to create everything from scratch. And the pre-existing texture would be quite useful. Uh, later on, I'll show you how to get that into Substance Painter and into UV4 anyway. But nonetheless, you know, it's a good way of uh, uh, getting graphics in very, 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 very quickly. So your first port of call is to find the necessary graphic. Obviously, you will need to put it into Photoshop at some point. So I'll just load up Photoshop in the meantime, and I'll also look at my graphic as well. So now I have Photoshop open. I've already got a pre-existing <coughs> folder. In fact, that same image you should find on Blackboard. Uh, this one here, gb.jpg. So the first thing we want to make sure is we are using 1024 by 1024, or you know, 256 or 256, 128 by 128. It needs to be of an image size which is basically perfectly square and also compatible with ultimately, you know, Unreal Engine, uh, Painter, and Maya as well, for example. Uh, so, first of all, I'd recommend that you just start with a new canvas and just make sure uh, I'll just put this at 1024, 1024 by 1024, and click on Create. I'm assuming you all know the bare bone basics of using Photoshop. Then it's simply a matter of dragging your whatever papercraft object you've got in there. So I'm just going to transform that. So to be fair, we just need it edge to edge really. There we are. Again, you don't even have to be you know, the world's greatest. Uh, it doesn't have to be absolutely, absolutely aligned as long as it's there and thereabouts, it's all that matters. So that there would be perfectly lined, simply a matter of just saving this out as an appropriate image. Uh, in this instance, you can see in my option over here, uh, I've just called mine 1024 Game Boy. So once you've done that, uh, you literally just need to bring it in into uh, Maya. <coughs> so in Maya, uh, assigning a texture is very, very straightforward. First of all, you will need to start with the plane, obviously. So we'll just apply that uh, Game Boy texture. Uh, I'll just set up my folder structure to make sure I can just access it easily. Right, that's now done. So what you would do is you essentially just create a plane. And you don't need to worry too much about the size uh, or the dimensions uh, or the uh, 
and divisions etc so I've just hit create there and that's going to create this huge plane that's not a problem I can always scale it at a later point we'll leave it as is for the time being make sure you open up the material editor so we've got the hypershade window over here I'm going to click on that it's going to open up something on these lines and all you would do is don't use a blend or anything else like a font stick with a Lambert and that way it won't be too reflective and uh, annoy you so click on Lambert so with this here I would advise you to name it as well <coughs> so just hit rename and just call it Game Boy it makes sense because in the long run you know if you've got lots and lots of assets and you've seen it you might confuse yourself so with that selected you've got the color options over here just going to click on that there and then you're going to tell it you want to use a file so click on file and then you'll have to just click it it's a bit convoluted to be fair and then just find the actual file itself so I've just kind of pasted in my uh, pre-existing link to that in this case 1024 Game Boy I'm going to click on open so that now you can see it's applied to the actual object over here the shader ball so you can always turn that into uh, a plane as the case may be or a sphere if you want to get an idea of what it looks like and then you can just use alt and the left mouse button to move around that anywhere so that's definitely uh, on there so we'll just click on the Game Boy again click on our asset in question uh, you don't in fact you don't need to click on that actually just click on the, the plane right click on the material and then assign material to the selection and then lo and behold it should appear if yours doesn't appear doesn't appear then it might be the case that you just haven't pressed uh, 6 so once you press 6 that will display the actual image itself um, 4 and 5 will basically hide uh, or flick between wireframe and shaded uh, but if you've got 6 enabled then you should see your actual texture so that's good to go so rather than do that one I'll just do this one in fact you know what I'll do from scratch I'll do this one so I'm going to press control 1 I'm going to press F I'm just going to go into full screen because we are essentially just going to be uh, modeling at this stage so what I'll do is I'm going to introduce the cuts uh, for the sides and the back obviously so we're just going to do by eye so I'm going to shift right click multi cut I'm going to press control and you can see as I slide this along it will allow me to put a slice in there you can see that via the green plane I might as well just go into top view now as well might be a bit quicker easier to do so I'm use control and I'm just going to put a slice there and then just work my way along so we know we need one there we need one there and obviously there as well and then finally just one there there we are and let's just confirm we now have everything so we should be able to delete the polys that we don't need so it should just be the case of oh, we're missing one there so we figure that out no problem so we go back into multi-cut and just zoom in a touch just add one there as well done and now we can just simply delete the bits that we don't need so I'm just in face mode I'm just going to press delete we'll miss the top one as well oops a daisy okay not necessarily a problem there we are and then chuck as the case may be so what we need to do now is essentially detach this and obviously fold it down or rotate it around 90 degrees and the same with here 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 and here as well so the easiest way to detach is shift uh, click on the actual asset uh, or the poly should I say make sure you're in face mode shift right click uh, extract face agree with the default you don't need to worry about the pivot point or anything on those lines and if you don't press anything else and just click on uh, this asset over here and click again that will select the face for that and then press G will repeat the command and then hover the mouse over here click once click twice press G again hover the mouse over here click once click twice press G again and then likewise here and that there should be its own separate object as well so now we have one I'm just going to press W in fact while I'm here I'll select everything and press rule I need all I need to do is press alt and C and that will centralize the pivot point on all of them in your case obviously modify center pivot so now when I select each one of these the pivot point is somewhere accessible so we just need to rotate this and the easiest way to do is to move the pivot point and rotate it based on the hinge so if I press D to control the pivot point and then click and hold V it's going to allow me to snap to that corner I'll select this object it's still enabling the pivot at the moment so I just click and hold V and repeat the process of so click hold down V move to the corner 
click hold down V move to the corner and then click hold down V and move to the corner now it's simply a matter of rotating this 90 degrees so press E and J will allow us to rotate the incremental value so I'm just going to go around select each individual component and then rotate 90 degrees so in this instance what we need to do is obviously rotate this 180 degrees first of all so press J Rotate that 180 degrees, then press W to translate, click and hold the V and snap that to the bottom corner. And then if we just rotate it around, that's now done. So obviously we have separate objects at the moment, so we'll need to click, select all of them, combine them together. And because we have had separate objects, we've still got a scenario where if I click on the face, it's still detached. So we need to make sure that the vertical world are together. But also we want it to be nice and straight as well. So a useful tip is instead of uh, manually you know moving the edge and trying to snap it with verts etc with the v you know it can be a bit of a pain what you can do instead is just select this particular section over here or any section for that matter uh, and then you would just basically squeeze it in by the scale so i'm doing a select over here i want to flatten it in on this axis so i make sure that i'm pressed r and i'm in scale mode and i just scale it in in the axis i would like to straighten things off likewise over here select the top and flatten it downwards likewise do the bottom and flatten that downwards so some subtle changes to the wireframe have occurred you've no longer got a repetition of edges uh, and now it's simply a matter of selecting everything and shift right click merge verts merge vertices so now when i select the top poly it should stay together which it does so that's a sure sign things are good and then the last step is going to be putting a bit of detail in there, select all the edges, put a little bevel in there, and put the segments to two. Job done. And then press five, and there we are, we have it. It's all done. So that there is clearly going to be less time consuming and probably look more realistic than, than trying to model in it, model it all in and model the buttons in as the case may be. Now this thing's probably just going to sit on a table, you know, over yonder somewhere. There's no point trying to uh, do too much to it, in all honesty. And you can apply that principle to, uh, you know, what we have here. So the easiest way to do this is essentially just collect your imagery. Your imagery. If you do a Google, Google search, a Google, a Google search for box scans, etc., they are ten a penny for literally every platform available. Uh, you're just going to compile your imagery. You're going to create a, a 2048 by 2048 or a 1024 by 1024. Set up your grid structure so there's roughly, you know, five across and five down, something along those lines. Anything uh, which is, you know, relatively dense. I wouldn't necessarily just do. I've got four knees as, as an example, but I would probably, you know, triple that as a minimum. Uh, the reason being is because if you've got lots of games, you know, you reduce your your, your workload by uh, two thirds if you just put, you know, five or six uh, covers within one image. Make sure that's set to 1024 as well, uh, and then you're literally just going to adopt the exact same process as before you'll put the necessary splits in uh, which is effectively this isn't it i suppose so here you can see that we've got our our imagery in there we're just going to create the split from one of them there's no need to do the rest so you're just going to put the splits in, in in one of the images just like we did before with the game boy you can see it's all detached off you will then just snap the pivot points in the correct location you can see they are correct in location there Put them all together, weld them all together, uh, and then finally, if you want to, you can always consider uh, just putting a soft chamfer on there as well. And obviously, if we were to uh, just delete these, I'll just isolate that one. Control one. So obviously, if we decided to make uh, you know a few copies of this, I'm just going to. Uh, press Control D to duplicate and move this over to the side, and I'm going to press Shift D once and Shift D twice, and effectively we've got the same cover there. So if I just do a drag select on these, and if I just open my UV editor, so I've got a shortcut key is Control One to be fair, uh, but if you haven't got that, then we just go back to our saved layouts perspective UV editor. We'll see our texture in here, provided you've enabled it. Uh, you can enable it on here, so display image and then it's simply a matter of double clicking on the face and then you can see that it's selected it within there and then you just shift it to wherever section you want it to be 
and this is obviously the beveled version as well so just bear that in mind and then again you know with that one there if I actually do it on here double click the entire face and do it and then shift this across and then finally double click on that from face mode and then just shift this across to this corner over here and then go into object mode opposite daisy I'm going to select those control 1 to isolate control spacebar control spacebar should I say spacebar rather than control spacebar and then obviously you'll have everything in place so it looks like I need to shift this one I haven't shifted it up uh, but never mind you get the general idea so if you had an image which had you know, potentially 10 of these on there then effectively you've got them all done but it is a block out so you don't need to go wild and have uh, every single box being absolutely unique you can essentially just choose two games and just use uh, you know create your own creativity in terms of uh, you know learning them, learn them out in different ways we're not interested in uh, every image has to be a, a separate uh, unique game it's not about that it's very much the case that you know effectively once you well I mean use a bit of common sense uh, you know we're not here to uh, uh, you're not here to make the world's greatest environment because you, you know you're not environment artists you need to create a detailed block out and clearly you can see here this would be adequate enough if it was a case that you wish to change uh, you know the graphics then it, it's, it's a straightforward affair because I would simply have to just duplicate these particular meshes pop them over here I don't need to do anything whatsoever to this mesh now I just go back to my original Photoshop file where I had the image of these games in there I just substitute that for another image and then before you know it suddenly you've got you know more games etc so that's something that you, you need to consider really I'm assuming you're all going to have game boxes in there but you know this type of uh, filling of the shelves is going to add life to your scene and make a big difference to it really so just make the effort to uh, at least create some variations of the, of the game boxes with some interesting game covers and then once you pop that in there with some nice lights and shadows etc you should end up with a good result and consider the fact that you know you've got all kinds of potential options in terms of how you show about how you go about showing your game whether it's you know bits leaning on top of each other whether it's in this fashion or whether it's in this fashion whether uh, you know being almost like a presented or whether it's a, a haphazard pile you know on the carpet as a case may be it can be whatever you want I suppose yeah and you can always define this layout within the, within the engine as well you don't have to have to do it here I suppose you can always start moving them like I've done here uh, you know within the, within the engine which is actually to be fair what you would do uh, this would be a separate mesh you bring into the engine and you know these ones would be a separate mesh that you bring into the engine they're both using the same material but they are different meshes and obviously within the engine you are just literally gonna uh, press alt uh, drag it down and that will make a duplicate variation of that okay